Today for dinner, I'm going to show you how I make enchiladas michoacanas. This is going to be good. I'm starting with the enchilada sauce. 12 ojillo chiles that I removed the stems and seeds from. I've placed them in a pot. I'm going to give them a good rinse and then fill the pot with water. Now I'm going to turn on the heat and you'll want to bring the pot of water up to a boil. I'm adding a small piece of onion, several cloves of garlic. These are small. One or two works. I'm going to cover with a lid and like I said, bring it up to a boil. I'm going to let it boil for about three to five minutes. Then I'm going to shut off the heat and you'll want to let these steep for about 15 to 20 minutes. After everything has soaked and steeped, it's time to puree this. I'm going to add all of the chilies, onion and garlic into my blender cup. Once I have everything in the blender cup, I'm going to add some of the soaking liquid. You can start with a cup and work your way up from there. Now a teaspoon of chicken bouillon powder. I'm also going to add around a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now I'm going to cover with a lid and I'm going to puree this. Puree very well. In a preheated pot with a little bit of cooking oil, I'm going to simmer for about five to 10 minutes. And you'll want to adjust the seasoning and salt to your preference and then it's done. For this recipe, I'm working with like two pounds of potatoes and here I have four medium to large carrots. And I'm going to peel and prep these and cut them into chunks, just like this. So everything is cut into chunks, the carrots and potatoes, but I'm gonna work with the carrots first because they take the longest. So in a preheated pan with cooking oil, I'm gonna saute the carrots. Now in my last Enchiladas Michoacanas uh, video, I just boiled the carrots and potatoes, then I fried them with the enchilada sauce. Today, I'm just gonna saute the carrots for about 10 minutes to give them a head start. Then I'll toss in the potatoes for another five minutes. I'm gonna add water, let it cook out, and then add the enchilada sauce. I don't know, maybe I'm doing it backwards today. Now I'm going to add the potatoes and continue to saute for another five minutes. And like I stated earlier, the carrots got a 10 minute head start. And now for the potatoes for another five minutes of saute time. Here I'm going to add one cup of water and I'm going to bring that up to a simmer slash boil. I covered with a lid to do that. And now that it's boiling, I'm going to remove the lid and let the water evaporate. Once the water evaporates, the potatoes and carrots should be tender and cooked through. Here I've added several tablespoons of the enchilada sauce, and I'm just going to combine this well, continue the saute for another five minutes, and they are done. I'm going to be using somewhere between 10 to 14 ounces of this queso fresco. This is a fresh farmer's cheese. And I crumbled it here in a bowl, and now I'm ready to start putting these enchiladas together. I'm gonna to start making them. Here I have cold corn tortillas, and I'm just going to dunk it into my prepped enchilada sauce. And in a preheated pan with cooking oil over a low heat setting, I'm going to fry these on each side before I start to fill them with the queso fresco. By the way, you could also do a filling of shredded chicken, shredded beef, or ground beef picadillo is another good one. So it really is up to you. So now I'm going to sprinkle the cheese onto the tortilla and repeat the process. And you can try fold this. I'm just going to fold it right in half. That makes life easy. So sometimes when I make this, I love to boil or roast chicken to serve alongside the enchiladas. Like I said, you could shred it, but I like to serve chicken pieces that I cooked. So I'm going to repeat the process for about three of them. And like I said, I'm just going to sprinkle the cheese and fold it over. Yeah. So I flipped these and fried them on both sides. So now I'm going to plate them up. And I usually, out of this sauce recipe, it's enough to make enchiladas for four people. Now, for my garnishes, I'm going with thinly sliced onion and shredded fresh lettuce. And it really is up to you. You can add salsa. Sometimes I add pickled carrots on top. Here, I'm just going to add some shredded lettuce, and I'm going to go for that thinly sliced onion. Here, I'm going to add some Mexican sour cream or crema and a little sprinkling of the cheese, and dinner is ready. 
But before I forget, I'm going to add those tender potatoes and carrots that I sauteed in the sauce as well. My son loves these enchiladas. They're so good and they're really not that hard to make. So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.